fish. Th no, thank you for that, that moment of authenticity that is so important, especially in this digital virtual world. So yes, of course, of course, thank you. Um, so next up we have Sam. All right, let me just share my screen. Okay, hi guys, my name is Samantha Moran and today we're gonna be looking at um, post-traumatic growth. Um, it can be at times kind of a heavy topic, so I'm gonna try to be as light with it as I can. <laughs> um, so just to get started, um, we're gonna cover the basics of post-traumatic growth. Um, while looking at the differences and the interactions um, that post-traumatic growth has with um, post-traumatic stress, which is a little more well-known, um, and then seeing the way that art can be an avenue for people, um, getting them from one end of trauma to the other. Um, so first, uh, we'll kind of unpack trauma a little bit. Um, traumatic experiences are so common um, that quite a lot of people have probably experienced at least one significant traumatic event in their lifetime. It could be, you know, natural disasters, terrorism, war, severe illness, bereavement, anything along those lines. Um, so kind of a question to just keep in the back of your mind as I go through this presentation is why are some people more After a traumatic event, whether it's a serious illness or the loss of a loved one, um, it's natural to stew over the event, constantly thinking about what happened, uh, replaying thoughts and feelings kind of over and over. Um, this is called rumination, and it's often a sign that you're working hard to make sense of what happened and that you're actively tearing down your old belief systems and creating new structures and, um, of meaning and identity. Um, so this graphic here is just kind of to break down the what happens after trauma, um, and it shows that post-traumatic growth is a consequence and not a cause, and it's how um, we can consciously embrace the positive transformation. So um, I want to be really clear on something that um, post-traumatic growth doesn't imply that trauma is not, you know, destructive and challenging, because it is. Um, but it, it does, it also does not say that victims should be able to simply just bounce back to their normal life. Um, but instead, post-traumatic growth is evidence that shows us that over time, people can find benefits from their adversity. Um, so to evaluate whether and to what extent someone has achieved, um, growth after trauma, Psychologists use a variety of self-report scales, um, and they look for positive responses in these five areas. Um, appreciation of life, relationships with others, new possibilities, personal strength, and spiritual change. So to look at post-traumatic stress and post-traumatic growth, um, the two are very different. So post-traumatic stress is a disorder in which a person has difficulty recovering after experiencing or witnessing something that's very traumatic. Um, traumatic stress often goes one of two ways. Either the survivor feels too much and is just completely overwhelmed with emotion, or they feel too little emotion. And that's kind of described as like the numb feeling that some people can have. Um, Whereas then you have on the other end, you have post-traumatic growth, which is the positive um, mental shift that someone experiences as a result of a traumatic event. So the experiences of post-traumatic growth and post-traumatic stress aren't mutually exclusive. Um, so growth doesn't only happen for the resilient people. It's, it's a misunderstanding to think that only the weak are going to experience the struggles and the strong are going to experience the growth. Because in all actuality, when you have more coping skills to start with, you actually um, might experience less growth and that those who are more resilient in the start may have fewer chances than others to see those changes happen. Um, and also there, some of the studies that I researched indicated that post-traumatic stress and post-traumatic growth can coexist 
together in traumatized individuals. So that can also be an explaining factor um, for why there are different levels of post-traumatic stress among groups of people who went through the same traumatic event. It could be because maybe in one of those five categories, they're also experiencing some post-traumatic growth. Um, so kind of looking at creating through trauma, you know, can post-traumatic growth also lead to increased creativity? And, you know, there is a strong relationship between the number of adverse lifetime events and perceived creative growth. Um, there was a study that I, I read about that actually, um, it assessed the role of experiential avoidance in post-traumatic growth in a sample of college students. So in the sample, the college students most frequently reported traumas were like things like the sudden death of a loved one, um, motor vehicle accidents, violence in the home, and in some cases, natural disaster. And basically what they found from the study was that the greater um, the distress, the greater the post-traumatic growth. Uh, but this was only in those with low levels of experiential avoidance, whereas with those um, who reported um, the low levels of experiential avoidance, they reported the highest levels of growth and meaning in life. So this increased meaning can be a really great avenue for creative expression. Um, if you look at you know, the biographies of many highly creative people, they often link their inspiration to tragedies that they endured. So um, if you're thinking of like Frida Kahlo, for example, like she's a really great example of somebody who took her traumas and what she went through and the things that happened to her and used that as inspiration to create. Um, but post-traumatic growth can provide virtually anyone with creative inspiration that may not have existed previously, you know, kind of going back to what we talked about in Simone's presentation, like art can be for anyone. So it's not to say that like, you have to be this artistically inclined person to resort to creating after trauma. Um, and rumination plays that we discussed um, previously, it, it plays a big role. Um, so intrusive rumination is a significant predictor of post-traumatic depreciation, which is when life feels like it's worsening. Whereas if you have deliberate rumination, that plays a strong factor in post-traumatic growth. Um, and it also appears to be linked to stronger creative growth as well, um, as improvements in relationships, spiritual development, and other aspects of life following the traumatic event. So um, could using creative arts therapy help trauma survivors move on with their lives by encouraging post-traumatic growth? In some cases, yes, in some cases, no. It's going to be different for every um, individual. But given the apparent link between the adverse experiences and creativity, as research continues on the topic, we may discover new ways to encourage healing by enhancing creativity. Um, so just to kind of wrap it up, post-traumatic growth is a very real possibility for anyone who endured a um, post-traumatic event. Post-traumatic growth and post-traumatic stress can occur at the same time. So if you think back, you know, I didn't want to involve everyone with, you know, kind of thinking about their traumas because that's kind of a heavy thing. But if you at some point, you know, think back and reflect on things that have happened to you and things that you've gone through, um, you can realize that there might be a little bit of both. There might have been, you know, kind of the rough patches and then kind of the, the growth at the end. Um, so, and in a lot of cases, creative expression can be a really strong catalyst for post-traumatic growth. So, I mean, I know personally, one of the reasons I was interested in this topic is because I felt like my whole life growing up, whenever anything happened, I maybe I didn't want to talk about it, or maybe I, you know, acted like it didn't matter, but I went to creating art, and that, it's not like it made me get over things that happened, but it, it helps you grow. Um, so when you're thinking about, you know, your own kind of journeys with it, and your own traumatic events that you've maybe gone through, you think back to those, um, the five areas that they look for the positive change in, um, and, you know, maybe you're noticing that you have a newfound spirituality or you're noticing differences in your relationships with others 
or you notice um, like a more positive outlook on life and a newfound personal strength. Any and all of those things are post-traumatic growth. So it's very possible that you've experienced post-traumatic growth and not even realized it. Um, and that's kind of all I have, um, unless anyone has any questions they wanna drop in the chat. Um, in the chat, I'm gonna stop my share and I'm gonna drop in the chat a link to um, kind of like a self-assessment for um, post-traumatic growth, just in case anyone's interested in checking that out personally and, you know, looking at that. So thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sam. I, I have to say, like, I mean, again, it's like a selfish thing on my part, but I'm like, wow, like I'm learning so much from all of these things that you guys are putting together. And just really what a wonderful way that you weaved these concepts together in such a way that I'm like, oh yeah, like I get that. And it's like, and you know, I, I kind of have some understanding of this stuff, but it's like, y'all are teaching me new stuff. And that's really awesome. Um, does anyone have a, a comment or a question? Megan, go ahead before we move on to our last presentation. Sam, this is so eye-opening. I've never heard this term before. And I like, in my presentation, I kind of described like my sort of relationship with art after like a traumatic injury. And I, you just kind of opened my whole mind and like making me rethink that kind of whole process because it completely changed my life. That's why I'm, it kind of led me to this program and yeah, I got my job. And so like, I, I just really loved how you, like hearing you sort of spell it out for me and explain like what kind of happened. It was really fascinating. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people find themselves like in that situation. And I, when I was talking to Jess and I was like starting the research project, I came across one of the articles that they talked about this and in undergrad there was a portion of time where I was a psychology major so like I took all the basic courses and I'd heard tons about post-traumatic stress and I had never heard this term either until this semester um, and it seems like when I was doing my research like it's kind of a it's not a newer thing like it, it happened the term was coined in the 90s but it's kind of more recently people are looking more into it and kind of like, I don't want to say like caring about it, but caring about it. Um, so yeah, I, I had never heard it either. <laughs> and it's so important because it puts like, it's like a positive term. It puts like a positive like spin on sort of that process of recovering. Yeah. yeah. Well, and what's important is that it's naming something that's already happening, right? So it's, it's not, post-traumatic growth is not something that's invented. Right. And, and I think the way that you were able to like, and, and I'm always just so impressed with like the amount of growth that you guys all have, even in the last couple of weeks, right. Of like the last time that we all had our individual meetings and then it's like, whoa, you all have pulled all this together. But like the way you talk about this post-traumatic growth and the connection with creativity. And we always think like, oh, you need to like go through all this stuff for artists. Why are they always have so much that happened to them or this or that? And it's like, well, wait a second. Like you, you're kind of just naming something that it's almost like what came first, the chicken or the egg, right? And so it's it's very interesting. And I, and I think it leaves us with a wonderful groundwork of understanding of how are we using language to speak about this stuff, right? And how can we de, you guys know I love this, depathologize like our normal human reactions to the stuff that happens and it's like you know um a way to just kind of put that all together um so thank you thank you so much sam this was really wonderful um and let's move on last but not least we will finish out with our last presentation of the night and thank you everyone for hanging out and we will take some time for more just kind of discussion and question afterwards but abby omi you're up next <laughs>